Phantom, how's it going? This is the Hellboy reading order. This is the way that I think you should read the Hellboy series because it makes the most sense chronologically and it makes the most sense story-wise, at least to me, in the Hellboy universe. The Hellboy universe is so huge. There are so many books and there are so many things to read that I've read online people saying, how do I get into Hellboy? What's the best way to get into Hellboy? So let's get into it. And we really are just going to dive into it, but as a quick note, I should also say that the Hellboy series Weird Tales is not going to be included in this reading order, simply because of the fact that Weird Tales is not canon. Those are just short stories that various other writers and artists decided to make about Hellboy. However, they are not canon and they are not required reading, so you can go ahead and skip that. But if you do want some extra, you know, fun side stories of Hellboy and some adventures from other people, then I recommend you do check it out. It's a fun read. So obviously the best way to start with Hellboy is Volume 1. You're going to pick up the first volume of Hellboy and you're basically getting Hellboy's origin and his first case involving the Plague of Frogs that's going to be a bigger threat later on in the series, uh, especially when you start getting into BPRD and things like that. But what you're getting here is Hellboy's origin story and you're also going to want to get Volume 2, Wake the Devil. Now you're going to get more of Hellboy's origin story in Wake the Devil and his place in the overall universe involving Rasputin. Those are the first two trade paperbacks if you're keeping track of it or the first library edition. Uh, for this video I'm going to be using the library edition simply because those are the ones that I have on hand and I think they are the best presentation of Hellboy that is currently available. Afterwards you're going to want to get volume 3 The Chained Coffin and volume 4 The Right Hand of Doom also known as volume 2 in the library editions. Again, we're using the library editions but if you are buying trade paperbacks you're up to volume 4 in the series right now. Volume 3 being The Chained Coffin and Volume 4 being The Right Hand of Doom. You are then going to move on to Volume 5 in the series which is The Conqueror Worm or in other words Volume 3 in the library editions and The Conqueror Worm is an interesting story because this is basically where Hellboy has had enough with the BPRD. He's like look I'm tired of the practices you guys are using uh, you're basically just using me to kill monsters I do not feel comfortable with what the plans are and what you guys are doing and how you guys are essentially just using all our partners and all the people in the BPRD as guns for hire and you really don't care about them so you know what I quit I'm gonna go to Africa that is where the story kind of branches off into differing stories and you also get the introduction of one of my favorite side characters Lobster Johnson so you've pretty much read everything in the Hellboy universe up to the point of Conqueror Worm at this point, and you're free to branch out and do anything you want in the universe. You're free to read almost any of the series because of the fact that you do have an understanding of some of these characters, and you can read Plague of Frogs like I recommend, or if you're a Hellboy fanatic and you just want to keep reading Hellboy stories and seeing where his story goes, I recommend you keep going with Strange Places, which is the other half of this uh, library edition. Uh, you can then jump into the Crooked Man and the Troll Witch, which are the subsequent volumes after Conqueror Worm and Strange Places. And then you can get Darkness Calls and the Wild Hunt. And the Storm and the Fury and the Bride of Hell. And that pretty much takes you all the way up to where Hellboy is right now, which is the Hellboy in Hell series. Now let's say you read up to Conqueror Worm, which is again, volume five in the trade paperbacks. And you're like, yes, this is awesome. I want to keep going with the BPRD story. You're going to want to pick up BPRD Plague of Frost. This is the hardcover edition. Uh, these are massively hard to come by, the hardcovers. A lot of them are out of print. However, they have been reprinted in trade paperbacks. And you're going to want to collect the Plague of Frogs arc, which pretty much contains the BPRD fighting the war on the frogs. And the BPRD are characters like Abe Sabian, Liz Sherman, uh, Roger the Homunculus, and it centers around them and how they deal with the War of the Frogs. You're going to want to read Volume 2. Volume 3! Right there. This one is the one that is actually the hardest to come by. It's massively out of print and it's fetching for a lot of cash right now online. So if you do find one of these, snatch it up if it's at a good price. And then Volume 4. That pretty much concludes the whole Plague of Frogs war, and then you can either jump in to the BPRD Hell on Earth, 
or you can go back in time like I'm recommending and you can start with the 1946 series. So you've read Plague of Frogs and you're like, man, I want to keep going. I want to see the fallout of what happens. You are, again, free to jump into Hell on Earth and you'll be perfectly fine. However, I'm recommending you jump back in time and read the 1946 series in 1948. And it basically is what it says. It follows the beginning of the BPRD. And the reason I'm recommending you jump back in time and read this hardcover edition is because of the fact that a lot of the characters in here play a larger role in the Hell on Earth series. And you're going to notice that a lot, especially in the Hellboy series when you're reading those, is that you're going to be reading one or two uh, issue stories and you're going to think, oh, they're one-off stories, they don't play a big arc. Uh, those characters jump back into the story later on and they play a huge role, much in the same way that happens here. So you're going to want to read this, the 1946 through 1948 series, and then you are going to want to read the PRD Vampire, which is the series that follows after the PRD 1946 and 1948. So pick that up. At this point in the series that you've done the whole 1948 series, you've done Vampire, you've done all the other stuff that you need to do, and you can jump into Hell on Earth, which takes place after the Plague of Frogs. Hell has literally been unleashed on Earth, and the BPRD are dealing with it. So you've got Volume 1, which is New World. Uh, volume... Let me get it real quick. Two. Gods and Monsters. Volume 3. Russia. Volume 4. The Devil's Engine. Volume 5. The Pickens County Horror and Others. Volume 6. The Return of the Master. And Volume 7. A Cold Day in Hell. Now, <clears throat> it's at this point after a cold day in hell that something happens to Abe Sapien. I'm not going to ruin it here, uh, but let's just say he's not what he used to be. And at this point, you can either keep going with the Hell on Earth series, or you can jump into the Abe Sapien series like I'm recommending. So again, you can read Hell on Earth. You can keep going with that. However, if you want to do my reading order, that's perfectly fine. This is the reading order that works for me. <clears throat> and you're going to get Volume 1 of Abe Sapien after Volume 7 of... You know, Hell on Earth. <clears throat> and that's going to take place a little bit farther back in the timeline, but we're going to get into why in a moment. Uh, you're going to get then Volume 2 of Abe Sapien. And Volume 3, Dark and Terrible and the New Reign of Man. Um, if you're going to notice on here, the first thing is Abe looks a little bit different. And that's not just a different artist. Uh, something happens to Abe that dramatically changes him, again, that I'm not going to get into. But you're going to want to read up to this point, and then you're going to want to jump into Witchfinder. So at this point, you're probably wondering, oh great, another series. But there's a method to the madness. Uh, in Witchfinder, you're getting introduced to a side character that's going to play a larger role in Abe Sapien's story. And so he doesn't just show up in the following volumes of Abe Sapien. You're going to want to start here. So you're going to want to read Volume 1 in The Service of Angels. And Witchfinder basically centers around Sir Edward Grey as he is sent by the Queen of England to conduct these kind of research and experiments and hunt down these gothic monsters and things like that. It's basically your Van Helsing type story. Uh, so you're going to want to read that. Then you are going to want to read Volume 2. Lost and Gone Forever. Volume 3. Mysteries of the Unland, and that pretty much catches you up with everything Witchfinder. Now you've read Witchfinder, you are free to jump back into the Hell on Earth series or the Abe Sapien series because really they kind of take place at the same time with each other. There's no intertwining story between the two. So really you can just go from <clears throat> Witchfinder, you can go to BPRD Hell on Earth Lake of Fire. The Reign of the Black Flame. Volume 9. The Devil's Wings. Flesh and Stone. <clears throat> Had to clear my throat a lot. Okay, after you get to Flesh and Stone, you are then going to want to read Sledgehammer 44. Uh, the reason behind this is that Sledgehammer 44 takes place before the events of the next volume of Hell on Earth, which is the Metamorphosis. So read this, then this, which is, this volume is volume 12. And then you are going to be pretty much caught up to Hell on Earth, which is volume 13, End of Days. Now you've read that, 
Like I said, you can then read Abe Sapien. You could read Abe Sapien at the same time you're reading Hell on Earth. It's perfectly fine. And you can read Abe Sapien Volume 4. Volume 5. Volume 6. And Volume 7. So it's at this point you're probably wondering, what's this Lobster Johnson series that I hear you keep talking about and that was mentioned in the earlier Hellboy series? Uh, Lobster Johnson is, for the most part, its own standalone thing. You really don't need to read Lobster Johnson to get the overall story of what's going on in the world. However, it is a fun read. Like I said, it is canon, it is set in the Hellboy universe, however, for the most part, it doesn't really have anything to do with it. Uh, you can read Volume 1 at any time. You don't have a set reading order really for Lobster Johnson. You can read it pretty much at any time you want. Uh, volume 2. Volume 3. Satan Smells a Rat. Good stuff. And Volume 4. Get the Lobster. And you're pretty much caught up with everything Lobster Johnson related at the moment. So the last few books that I'm going to cover are pretty much their own standalone deal, but I have a feeling they're going to play a larger role later on, and plus their fun reads. Uh, Frankenstein Underground is basically telling the story of Frankenstein, and if you've read the series, which is basically just a one-off trade, you know that this is leading basically to the end game. This is a huge series, even though it's only a few issues long, that I think is going to play a much larger role later on. So I do recommend that you do read this. You can read this pretty much at any point after the Hell on Earth series and you'll be golden. Uh, like I said, the implications in here are massive of what's going to happen in the universe. Uh, you can then go to DPRD and uh, the 1952 Hellboy story which basically tells Hellboy's first case. Hellboy's a lot less confident in this and he's kind of a rookie, he makes mistakes. It's a really interesting and fun read. And then you can read The Midnight Circus, which is an original graphic novel that, again, you can read these three trades at your leisure, you know, anytime you want to. You're like, yeah, I want a little bit more Hellboy, I want a little bit more of the universe. Go ahead and pick these up. Uh, and The Midnight Circus basically tells the story of what happens to Hellboy as a child when he comes upon this really weird circus. I'm not going to get into too many details here, but it's a really fun read and it's a one-off graphic novel. So as you can tell, the Hellboy universe is vast and it's got a lot of intertwining books left and right all over the place. And I really hope that this video kind of helped clarify what the Hellboy universe is and how you can jump onto it for those of you that have been curious. Uh, if this is your first time checking out my channel, comment, subscribe, please let me know what you think. Leave a like, leave a dislike for all I care. Uh, really, really, I do appreciate all the feedback that I get from you guys. If you do feel so inclined uh, and you do want to support this channel and help me keep the lights on, I'm going to put a link right there where you will be able to find my PayPal account and you'll be able to, to donate. I really appreciate those of you that have gone and donated. Thank you, thank you so much. It helps this channel greatly. But, yeah. Like I've said, I hope this was insightful for you guys, and I'm wishing you all a great week. Love you.